Hi, Chem 101 students, and welcome back for our uh, week 13 lecture on solutions. So solutions uh, are a homogeneous combination of two or more substances. Uh, we'll talk about non-homogeneous mixtures in the next lecture, but right now we're going to talk about homogeneous mixtures uh, of two components. Uh, this is called a solution. And what's important when considering a solution is the concentration, meaning how much of one substance is dissolved in the other. So there's a lot of really important applications to this that we'll discuss as we go through uh, the, the chapter here. Uh, if you're in the, interested in the healthcare professions, the concentrations of solutions are extremely important. Uh, so when you inject someone, for example, with an IV, uh, that IV will have a certain concentration of sodium chloride or glucose and that concentration is very important uh, if you inject someone with the wrong concentration of solution it could be very bad for them and so these are highly regulated uh, and, and we'll talk about what are the kinds of concentrations that we would have for certain solutions that might be injected into a person's bloodstream. Uh, if you're interested in science and chemistry, uh, knowing the concentration of solutions is extremely important for knowing uh, how reactions will go and how react, uh, chemical reactions will happen. So let's, uh, let's start to talk about solutions now. An example solution is salt water. So I briefly mentioned this in, in the last lecture, some of these things I'm kind of reviewing from last week at the beginning here. Uh, so in a solution, we've got a couple of pieces of terminology. First is the, is the uh, term solvent. Solvent is the mainer, main component or the major component in solution. So for example, if you have a solution of salt water, salt dissolving in water, the water is the solvent. It's the primary component. The solute is the minor component in a solution. So if we're talking about salt water again, the minor component would be the salt. You'll have more water, less salt. Uh, we say that the solute dissolves in the solvent. So the salt dissolves in the water. Uh, so the dissolved salt, and it's important to note that when you look at like, for example, salt water solution or sugar water solution, um, salt is an ionic compound, it's sodium chloride. So when it dissolves in water, uh, it separates into individual ions, and these ions are hydrated, as we discussed in previous chapters, uh, by the water molecules. They're surrounded by water molecules and broken apart into individual ions. If you're talking about uh, sugar, sugar is a covalent molecule. Uh, however, it is polar, so it is soluble in water. But again, uh, if you dissolve sugar in water, you'll notice that you can't really see the sugar there. And this is because the sugar is present as individual sugar molecules. And so those molecules are too small to scatter the light. So that we see, we see for solutions where we have a homogeneous mixture of a solute and a solvent, we'll find that uh, these appear transparent. Now they may have a color to them. Uh, if salt water and sugar water uh, have, they're colorless, but they're definitely transparent, you can see. If there is a color, for example, you're talking about Kool-Aid or something or soda, uh, if the color is, um, is dark enough, you may not be able to see through it, but if you pour it into like a narrow straw or something, you will be able to see through that uh, because the, the path passing through that colored uh, solution is short enough that it doesn't all get absorbed by the color full solution there. Uh, but regardless, whether the solution is colorless or it has a color, uh, it will appear non-cloudy. That's what makes a, you, make you able to identify a solution. So think of things that are not cloudy. Those are all uh, mixtures that are not cloudy. Those are all solutions or homogeneous mixtures. Oops. Um, in terms of a sol solute dissolving the solvent, a good question that we like we want to ask ourselves is how much will dissolve? So for ionic and covalent compounds in the last chapter, we basically classified them as these ones are soluble and these ones are not soluble. Uh, and that's kind of a, a broad distinction that we make, but there's you know there's such a thing as being kind of soluble or pretty soluble or 
or a little tiny, tiny bit soluble. There's everywhere in between. Uh, there's not just soluble and insoluble, but classifying things as soluble and insoluble can be pretty handy sometimes to give a general description of, of how soluble something is. But uh, if we want to talk about how soluble something is, also an important factor is what are the, the current properties of the solution that you're talking about. So for example, if you're trying to dissolve sugar in water or, or uh, tea let's say you're trying to make iced tea you guys already know that if you want to dissolve the sugar in the water you're going to want that you're going to want to dissolve the sugar before you put the ice into the iced tea right because if you just try to dissolve it after when it's cold it's hard to get that sugar to dissolve it takes longer and also less sugar would would ultimately dissolve in the tea and that is because solubility in a liquid is is greater at a greater temperature at a higher temperature and this makes sense right uh, if the substance that's dissolved in the liquid is present individual molecules or individual ions all when you put a chunk of solid in there all those molecules and ions will have to break apart so to help that along we often stir it when we're trying to dissolve a solid in a liquid like sugar and water and also what we might do is we wouldn't want it we want it to be not cold uh, not, if we can dissolve it when it's a higher temperature that will be easier and more of the sugar will dissolve or more of the solid will dissolve in the liquid and this makes sense right think back to what does temperature mean oh it, a, fa a higher temperature means all of the molecules are moving and jiggling around faster so if they're moving and jiggling around faster, that means it's going to be easier for them to separate from one another and spread out throughout that liquid and dissolve as individual molecules or ions. Now, for a gas dissolving in a liquid like soda, for example, CO2 dissolving in water, uh, the, it's the opposite situation. So you know this if you ever had a soda and it starts to get warm. Uh, the warmer it gets, the flatter it seems to get, right? Uh, and this is because gas molecules, when they're dissolved in the liquid, uh, you know, they will slowly escape and go out into the atmosphere and never come back dissolved in the liquid. And the higher the temperature, again, the faster all those little molecules are moving. And so it means that the easier it will be for those gas molecules to get out of the liquid and go somewhere else so they're no longer dissolved so gas solubility in liquid it, it is higher to lower temperature so uh, and these are not things you should memorize try to make sure to think about why this would be so the solid is soluble at higher temperatures more soluble because it can more easily break away from its chunk of solid that molecule can break out and go dissolve in the liquid because they're jiggling and moving faster but it would never be the case that the solid will leave the liquid but the gas is different the gas can leave the liquid and go somewhere else so it's going to have a lower solubility at higher temperatures And remember from the last week's lecture, uh, the way we decide if a substance is soluble in water or not depends on whether it's covalent or whether it's ionic. If it's covalent, it will mix with water if it's a polar compound. So uh, sugar, for example, is quite polar and so it will dissolve in water quite easily. For ionic compounds that mix with water, uh, the, the ions will be hydrated and the way you decide if they dissolve in water or not is based on the ionic solubility rules that we've covered in the past a couple of times. You always want those somewhere close by you in your notes. So when we're talking about solutions, as I said, it's really important to know how much of a solute is dissolved in the solvent of the solution. The reason being is because if you're going to do something with that solution, whether it's do a chemical reaction as a scientist or whether you're going to inject this solution into a person's body, the concentration is extremely important. How much solute there is in this solution that you're using is really important. Uh, and so there's going to be several ways in which uh, concentration can be measured. One of these is percent by mass or percent by weight. So this is will often be stated as percent M over M or percent W over W as a, a shorthand. And so percent M over M or percent W over W is the grams of 
the solute divided by the grams of the whole solution times 100%. Now, let's think about why this makes sense. Uh, just remember in our past discussions about percentage, uh, percentage is some part over a whole, and then we make it a percent by multiplying it by 100%. And so, uh, here the part that we're interested in is the the solute so we're saying how much solute and the whole is the entire solution so you're going to see for all of these various concentration type measurements they're all going to be the part that is the solute over the entire solution uh, times 100 percent makes it into a percentage and so although you're going to have to know you're gonna to have to memorize these formulas in a sense. Uh, you don't have to memorize them straight up. For all of these formulas, it's gonna be the part that's a solute on the top and, and the entire solution on the bottom, the part over the whole. What will differ is the way we're measuring the solute and the way we're measuring the solution. So in mass over mass or weight over weight, uh, we're measuring the grams or kilograms or some other mass measurement, but often it's grams. And uh, so, the rest is going to all be the same. Just when you think mass over mass, think grams over grams. Grams is the way we measure mass, right? For example, another way to measure the concentration solution is percent by volume or percent V over V. Uh, this is one you might have seen if you buy uh, a hard alcohol in the grocery store or if you by uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, for various purposes such as cleaning things and stuff. Uh, this will be often measured in terms of percent by volume or percent V over V. It will actually say this on the bottle of vodka or whatever. Uh, and this is going to be, again, notice what's on the top, right? Solute, solute on the top. Solution, solution on the bottom. The difference is that now we're measuring the amount of solute in terms of milliliters and we're measuring the amount of solution in terms of milliliters. So you can see here that it, it works exactly the same way as percent by mass. It's just instead of grams, it's milliliters involved. Of course, you could use a different volume unit. That would be okay too, as long as you're consistent with your volume unit, like liters would work there too. Okay, so now, um, let's talk about another type of measurement and this is percent uh, percent mass over volume so for this one again look what's on the top solute 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 solution 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 on the bottom okay these are all the same the only thing that's differing is what the unit is since this is percent mass over volume the sol solute part on the top should have a mass and that mass is grams there as you can see and the volume part on the bottom should have a volume milliliters as you can see there um, finally we have the last type of uh, concentration measurement and that is molarity and again look at what's on the top solute in all of these it's the solute on the top what's on the bottom solution always the part that is the solute over the entire solution. What differs here? With molarity, we have very specific units. This is basically the chemist's preferred way of saying concentration because it has moles on the top. And we as chemists like to count how many of these particles, how many ions or how many molecules are dissolved, and we count those in terms of moles. Uh, and on the bottom is liters of solution. So this is one you definitely have to memorize what this definition is. But remember, when you memorize, just think what is always on the top? Oh, it's the part that we're interested in. That's the solute, okay? What is on the bottom? It's the whole thing, the whole solution, okay? The only thing that differs is the units. And you don't really have to memorize the units because if it's by mass, well, then you know they're mass units. If it's by volume, then you know they're volume units. If it's mass over volume, well then the top is mass units, grams, and the bottom is volume units, milliliters. And finally, if it's molarities, it's moles per liter. That's what molarity is.
So how are we going to use these concentrations? Well, there's three different types of problems that I can give you related to these, and then they all have their applications. Uh, and so I'll try to kind of guide you in these applications as we go along. Uh, one is just how to use these definitions to write down a concentration. So in this kind of problem, you'll be given the mass or the volume for the solute and for the solution. Or sometimes you'll be given the mass of solvent and solute separately. Just a reminder, the solution is the solute and the, the solute and the solvent. So if you want the mass of the entire solution and you are given the mass of the solute and the mass of the solvent, you would add them together to get the mass of the entire solution. So here's an example of a problem. What is the percent weight over weight or mass over mass of 125 grams of solution with 25.9 grams of sodium chloride in it? Okay, well, first of all, we've got the word solution here, and we've got percent by mass. So this is asking us, what is the concentration? So this is a concentration problem. So we know we're going to have to use the definition of what this is, okay? And uh, we're given here our mass of solution, grams of solution, and we're given our grams of sodium chloride, which is in the solution. So the sodium chloride here is a solute, and there's 25.9 grams of it. The entire solution is 125 grams in mass. So now it's time for us to remember what does mass what does this mean percent mass over mass okay well it means our grams of our solute okay so let's let's remind ourselves of the definition here real quick percent weight uh weight over weight or this is also called percent mass over mass uh, this is, remember, it's first of all, it's mass over mass, so it's grams over grams. And what always goes on the top? The part. The part we're interested in is the solute. So in this case, the solute is sodium chloride. So grams of solute, which in this case is the sodium chloride. Okay. And then on the bottom is always the whole entire thing, the whole entire solution and then we're going to multiply by 100 percent to make it a percentage okay so what's going to go on top then the grams of solute 25.9 grams of sodium chloride that's the grams of the solute and what's going to go on the bottom what is going to go on the bottom the entire solution and mass, right? Because it's mass over mass. So grams of the entire solution, 125 grams. And then that's going to give us a decimal, less a number less than one. We're going to make that a percentage by multiplying by 100%. And uh, notice here that our gram units are going to cancel. So we're going to get the unit of percent. That's going to be our unit at the end. Okay, so now let's take out our calculator and, uh, and calculate this. 25.9 divide by 125 and then times 100. And we get 20.72. Uh, both of our numbers have three sig figs, so we should write the result with three sig figs. It should be 20.7. And our unit is percent, and specifically percent mass over mass. And so now we've determined the concentration by mass. So again, weight over weight and mass over mass are two ways of saying the same thing. So I've included both of them here. Uh, just a reminder, these are the same thing, okay? Uh, and notice that I did not mention the solvent, right? If the solvent isn't mentioned, then you can assume that the solvent is water. Uh, water is often called the universal solvent. Obviously not everything dissolves in water. We've already talked about that, but a lot of things do dissolve in water. And so uh, if, if we're talking about a solution and we never mention what the solvent is, you can assume the solvent is water unless it's otherwise stated.
Okay, what is the percent weight over weight or mass over mass of 16.8 grams of potassium iodide mixed with 89.2 grams of water? So here water is mentioned. And notice the mass of the entire solution is not mentioned, okay? So our solute here is potassium iodide. We got 16.8 grams of that. And water is our solvent. 89, so our solvent is water, 89.2 grams. But to find percent by mass, again, we need the solute over the entire solution. Well, the solution is the solute plus the solvent. So if we want the mass of the entire solution, we add these two. Solution is solute, 16.8 grams of Ki plus solvent, 89.2 grams. Uh, and if we add these up, 16.8, plus 89.2 we get 106 and we should write this note your remember your calculator doesn't know what sig figs are right since we are adding we're we look at the place value and the place value here is the tenths place the tenths place so our number is good to the tenths place now that value is a zero but we still write that zero because it is a significant digit <clears throat> So our percent mass over mass is going to be our, now notice this is mass over mass or weight over weight. This is going to be grams on the top and always on the top is our part that is the solute, right? So our grams of our solute is going to be going on top. So right here is going to be 16.8 grams of Ki. Then on the bottom, because this is weight on the bottom, it's also going to be grams down here. It's going to be grams of the entire solution. That's 106.0, whoops, grams of the entire solution there. Okay. And now we need to make that a percentage, so we multiply by 100%. Again, our grams here, our grams cancel, and our unit is going to be percent. That's the unit we're going to write. So now we need to calculate. 16.8 divide by 106 times 100 equals and we get this long number uh, we're dividing so now that we're dividing we count sig figs so we should look here at the sig figs okay so the top we have 16.8 that's three sig figs and on the bottom we have 106.0 that is four sig figs uh, so we're going to use the number of sig figs that is equal to our data that has the fewest. That would be the 16.8. So we want to write our number with three sig figs. So we'll stop here at the eight. Since this is a four, we round down. So we would say 15.8% mass over mass or weight over weight. Both of those mean the same thing. Make sure to read the question carefully on these, okay? So you notice there was a slight difference between this question and the last one. The difference was that uh, <clears throat> in the last question, we were given the mass of the entire solution. Here, we were given the mass of the solute and the solvent, and we had to add them together to get the mass of the, the solution. But it's always the solute over the entire solution. So that's why we had to get the mass of the entire solution. Okay, uh, now with percent volume over volume or percent weight over volume, uh, the, the volume of the entire solution is given. So if you're making one of these solutions and you want to make it accurately, you use a kind of glassware called the volumetric flask. And if we were doing labs in real uh, life here, you'd, you'd end up getting a little bit of experience using a volumetric flask. Uh, but it has one line on it. That line indicates very accurately the volume of your entire solution. And the reason why we use a volumetric flask is because uh, you can't just add up volumes to get the overall volume. Sometimes when you mix things, 
the volume of the mixture is different than the volume of the two things when they were separate. So if you want to get an exact amount of uh, exact volume of the entire solution, you need to put the solute in there first and dissolve it in some water or whatever your solvent is, and then fill it exactly to the line. So you'll know exactly the volume of the entire solution because the bottom of both of these involves the volume of the entire solution. And so you have to uh, very carefully note that. Um, and so what is the percent volume over volume of 125 milliliters of alcohol in 500 milliliters of solution? Uh, so here we're given the volume of the entire solution. Okay, and here we're given the, uh, the volume of our solute. We know the alcohol is being dissolved in, in the entire solution. So uh, let's identify here. So we've got a volume of our solute that is 125 milliliters, and we've got the volume of our entire solution. The entire solution is 500 milliliters. Okay, so we're doing percent volume over volume this time, percent by volume. So this is where you have to remind yourself of what is the definition of this. Well, remember, all these definitions have something in common. On the top is always the part that is the solute, and on the bottom is always the entire solution. And it, if, if it is a percentage, then you're, you're going to multiply by 100%. The only thing that differs here is the units you're using. Since this is volume, we want to use volume units like milliliters. And so milliliters on the top and milliliters on the bottom. OK, and now we're going to plug these in. So our percent by volume is going to be our milliliters of our solute. In this case, our solute is the alcohol. It doesn't say what kind of alcohol. There's a lot of different types of alcohol, but this is the alcohol here. So we're going to put the milliliters of the alcohol on top, 125 milliliters. Then we put the milliliters of the entire solution in the bottom. That's right here. And this is going to give us a decimal, a number less than one. So we're going to make that into a percentage by multiplying by 100%. Again, our volumes here cancel. And we're going to get uh, a, a, uh, a result here. So we're going to calculate the result. It's going to be 125 divided by 500 and then times 100. And it says 25. Again, remember, your calculator doesn't know what sig figs are, right? So let's think about how many sig figs we should have. We're dividing a number with three sig figs by a number with four. So our result should have three sig figs. So since it's 25 on the dot, we're going to write that as 25.0. And that's your percent by volume. And if you, if you ever are in the grocery store or something, and you see like a bottle of alcohol or a bottle of rubbing alcohol or like vodka or something, you look at the label and it will say so many percent and then it will say like this, volume over volume. Uh, also, if you look at, if you're in a doctor's office and you look at various syringes of things, you're going to see these types of concentrations stated on the syringes. Uh, <clears throat> They may be mass, mass percentages, volume percentages. Uh, they could be mass over volume percentages. Uh, all of those are seen. Uh, so if you wanted to make this, what you would do is you'd use a volumetric flask. It would have to be a volumetric flask with volume 500 milliliters. You'd put the alcohol inside the volumetric flask. So looking back at the picture, if we had a volumetric flask like this, but it was 500 milliliters, we pour in the 125 milliliters of alcohol, the alcohol, and we're gonna say, okay, in this one, we're not using a 10, we're using a 500 milliliter. And then you would fill it up to the line here with water and mix well, and that would give you exactly 500 milliliters of solution. Alcohol, that came out really bad. <laughs> alcohol, okay. So that is the reason why, why uh, basically we're calculating what is the concentration of these. And then as we move forward, use those concentrations to uh, determine what amount of alcohol, for example, we would need to make a solution like this. 
Finally, we're asked for molarity. Uh, and what is it? we're asked, what is the molarity of 56.3 grams of lithium fluoride in 250 milliliters of solution? So uh, here, notice we're doing molarity. And remember molarity, remember definition. Molarity is moles per liter, right? Moles per liter. And otherwise, it's the same as everything else. It's moles of solute over liters of entire solution. But the problem here is that uh, we don't have moles of our solute. Our solute is lithium fluoride, and we only have the grams of lithium fluoride. So uh, we're going to have to turn those grams to moles. Hmm, is there a way we can turn grams to moles and or moles to grams? Well, what kind of information do we need? You guys remember? You need the molar mass, okay? Uh, so if you the solute is 56.3 grams of lithium fluoride, but we're going to need the molar mass uh, to convert it. Uh, so this gives us one one uh, here uh, one one mole of lithium fluoride contains one mole of lithium ions. And if we look at the periodic table, I encourage you to get your periodic table out and take a look right now. We've got one lithium fluoride. Uh, one mole of lithium atoms and one mole of lithium fluoride. So that is going, at, and we're going to have one mole, one mole of fluor fluorine atoms. And so this is going to be one times the mass, uh, 6.94 for lithium grams, and one times the mass, molar mass of fluorine from the periodic table. Again, it's 19.0 grams. And so that's going to uh, give us a total of 23.9, uh, basically. 23.9. I think that's what, uh, 0.94. Okay, I used 260. This is 19.00, by the way. I need an extra zero on there. Uh, let me erase that. To this back to the pen okay 19.00 grams and so this is going to be 23.94 grams for one mole okay so we write our 56.3 grams of lithium fluoride and we want to convert those grams to moles and so we're going to use a conversion factor and and you guys know how to use conversion factors by now right whatever's right here you better have the same thing down here. And the number that's going to go with the grams of lithium fluoride is going to be 23.94 grams. And that is equal to one mole of lithium fluoride. So now our grams of lithium fluoride cancel. And we're going to get moles of lithium fluoride. We have 56.3 divided by 25.94. And that is going to get us uh, 2.94. 1, 7. So we're going to write this with three sig figs since the 56.3 has three sig figs. So we'll say 2.17 and our unit is moles of lithium fluoride. And now, uh, now we are going to uh, be able to do moles per liter. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. We have, uh, we have our moles, actually our 250 milliliters though, that is in milliliters. And so we need to convert that to liters. Do you guys remember how milliliters and liters are related? Remember, milli means a thousand times smaller. So milliliters are a thousand times smaller than liters. So a thousand little milliliters are equal to one liter. And we can just write that on the side, but this is something you should have still in your brain. 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So we have our 250 milliliters. We're going to put milliliters on the bottom so that they cancel. And the number that goes with the milliliters is 1,000. And that is equal to one liter. Our milliliters will cancel and we get 0 0.25. So 250 divided by 1,000. And I've written this with two sig figs because 250 here has two sig figs. The zero is not significant at the end because there's no decimal point. 
Okay, so now we're ready to go. 2.17 moles of our, our solute, lithium fluoride, divide by 0.25 liters. So molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. So this is the liters of the entire solution. This is the moles of the solute on top. And now let's calculate. 2.17 divided by 0 0.25. And we get 8.68. Since the 250 milliliters had two sig figs and thus the 0.25 liters has two sig figs, our results should have two sig figs. So we're gonna write this as 8.7, 8.7. And the unit here is big M, molarity. That means moles per liter, uh, 8.7. So remember a lot of times uh, people start to use big M to say mole. Big M is not mole. Mole is M-O-L or M-O-L-E. Big M like this is molarities. It means moles of solute per liter of solution. So this means there's 8.7 moles of lithium fluoride per liter of solution. And again, if we wanted to make this solution, uh, since the entire volume of the solution is 250 milliliters, what we would do is we'd take our 56.3 grams of lithium fluoride, put it in our volumetric flask, dissolve it in water, and then fill to the 250 milliliter line. And so that's how we would prepare this solution accurately. Okay, and so at this point, uh, I'm gonna end this first lecture uh, about um, about uh, the how how to determine the concentration of solutions then in the next lecture we're going to move on to how to use the concentration for various purposes and so I'll see you in the next lecture